Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with this wonderful expertness, Anna Kelly. How you doing, Anna? I'm doing great today. Awesome, awesome. So, hey, a couple of weeks ago, I think we talked about potentially six rate hikes uh, heading into, I think it was 2024. I've read several articles about that now. So I want to put on our, I don't know, holiday hat, look at our crystal ball, and really talk about what that might mean to have six or more rate hikes between now and the end of 2023, which is what, like, I guess that's 25 months from now. Yeah. When, when you, when you hear stuff like that, does it send shivers down your spine? Does it, I mean, when people hear six rate hikes, I think most people go, Ooh, but I'm not sure you and I kind of think that, but what do you, what do you think? Yeah. You know, I've been thinking about this a lot um, because I'm always thinking about where are things going and how do I mitigate and hedge as best as I can. Right. Yep. And I really thought up until a few weeks ago that um, rates have to go up mm -hmm. and probably at least a percent over the next year. That was kind of my guess. Maybe half a point earlier next year than yep. some were anticipating. Some watching the Fed, you know, anticipate that by the end of next year, they'd go up half a point. I thought, you know, they're going to go up half a point probably as soon as January or March. Okay. Um, and half a point is really not earth shattering um, when you think of where we are historically, but it's a big bump for the Fed to do all at one point. Yeah, at, at one time. I think in my career, they've moved half a point, probably four, maybe five times. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, just so you know, I agree with you. I think their first move is a half a point. So we're. I think it has to be. Has I think to be. it has to be. Um, for the most part. Now, there's things I don't know that I'm going to bet I don't know, right? But. We are at such a point of inflation. It's the highest in 31 years. 6.2% right? and going higher, I think. And going up. So when you're talking about 30 years, I mean, that's, you know, about three quarters of my lifetime that we haven't seen inflation like this, right? And it doesn't seem to be slowing. And I think part of the reason is because there's such a, an anomaly on the supply side um, that is not being fixed yet, right? So we've got inflated consumer demand at the same time that we've got a lack of supply or a lack of getting stuff to you, even if it's there, right? The mm -hmm. supply chain issues. And mm -hmm. so the only way the Fed can really take care of this is raising rates. The only real question in my mind that I really started really delving into in the last two weeks is looking at the debt that the Fed has now compared to what we have historically. Mm -hmm. And in the past, I would say the Fed would just raise rates and you know, it would start to cool things, a little bit of pain, but it would be fine. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Fed is a net borrower to six to seven trillion dollars. And wow. so any raise in the interest rate, Fed normally doesn't like to do if they're the borrower, because now they're raising the debt payments that they're making on the, the trillions of dollar debt, which is hundreds of millions of dollars a year if mm -hmm. they go up in, in their rates. And so I think they're a little more constrained now than they have been historically, because historically they're a net lender, not right. a net borrower. So yeah. the question is, can they afford half a point immediately and a bunch of quarter to half a point raises? And who pays for that? Ultimately, we pay for it with increased taxes. Yeah. So yeah, I think we're in sync. I think there's so much debt on the government and the Fed's balance sheets that there's a natural upper limit. Because I do not think... I, I really, again, I watch kind of the interest payments versus revenue collection. And if our interest payments on our debt ever exceeded revenue collection, which, oh, by the way, folks, is taxes. Yeah. That's a recipe. I mean, if it happened for a quarter, okay. But th that's, that's where, that's like a red line to me. Like we cross that slippery slope, bad things happen. So yeah, I think yeah. there's a natural upper limit. I actually think it's somewhere around like a total one and a half, maybe 2%. Um, yes. Kind of, kind of, that's the upper limit. And again, I think, I think they jump it the first time to show they're serious, right? Fed, typically speaking, when the Fed in my history, when they make big adjustments, it's a big adjustment. And I yeah. think going from easy uh, interest rates to not will be a half a point to send the market that we're, we're, we're serious about whacking inflation. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think it's half a point out of the gate and potentially two more quarter point increases within a year. Yep. So my thought is it's rates are going to go up a percent probably in the next year to year and a half. I would bet money on it, right? Yeah, I would uh, I would say, yeah, if you gave me 18 months for sure, if you gave me a year, 
I might put a couple bucks on it, but it wouldn't it certainly wouldn't be my life savings. But you gave me 18 months. Yeah, I'd, I'd put a I'd put some money on that for sure. Right, right. And yeah. and the other thing is we have to remember this is still historically low rates, like very historically low rates. You mean so- I could make money at four and a half percent interest? Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I made a lot of money at six percent interest. Yeah, me too. And five for five and a quarter percent interest. And I thought we were doing great, right? Because we've seen much higher rates in our in our lifetime, our 20 years of investing. So um, I'm not extremely worried about it, except for this. Mm-hmm. What does it do to consumer psyche, like we talked about in the last video? Yep. Um, what does that do to demand? And then even if we raise rates and demand starts to back off a little bit, is it enough when we still have supply chain issues and supply problems? And the Fed cannot fix the supply side of stuff. No, they have so, no, no, they don't play there. They could they could jawbone all they want, but they can't make cargo ships get unloaded faster. They, right, they're not right. that powerful. So, you know, but, but that brings up the point of if, if they raise rates a quarter point, a half a point, even up to a point, does it slow down consumer demand enough to bring inflation down to where it needs to be mm-hmm. when people still are really antsy to get the stuff that they can't get? Well, here's the answer. The answer, the answer, the answer, no, I, I'll give you my answer. The answer is no. And here's what's going on right now, at least my current belief in my crystal ball, which is as broken as everybody else's. This started as a supply chain issue, no question, which has rippled through to stuff costing more, which has caused people to request higher wages. And once you get in the wage cycle, wages are sticky. They're inelastic. It's hard to bring them down too once they've gone up. I don't know anybody that's taken a pay cut. I mean, there's always that short window where executives do and blah, blah, blah. But uh, you know, you go to uh, you go work at Chipotle or wherever you're you're making or Amazon or whatever it is, you're gonna easily sign up to take a you know two dollar cut in a year, no yeah. chance. So the supply chain issues may have been where it started, may have uh, caused retailers and service sectors to not discount, which is I think what's happening. They're gonna be far more profitable. They're not advertising. It's gonna be a banner year for retailers, but that's causing the wage cycle. And now we are in the wage cycle. Is just started at the bottom levels but it will roll through the entire stack. And once that happens, game over. Inflation's real. It's it's going to accelerate from here, I think. Yeah, I, I think inflation's going to be here for a while. I definitely believe that it's not transitory. And, and I thought that before. Um, the other thing is just to think about, you know, the, Wells Fargo came out a couple of weeks ago and they said they anticipated um, at least 10 years of a flat stock market. I years, saw that. Flat, right? Because even with even with increased demand, companies are struggling, right? Um, and when the money stops and all of this, you know, free money that the government's been sending to both people and to companies, mm-hmm. and now they're having to, you know, really increase wages, which I don't think they were significantly when Wells Fargo came up with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think companies are going to going to start to struggle. And even though you might have an increased wage now, I can guarantee you what's going to happen rate uh, your your raises if you're a w2 employee are going to go to almost nothing and i saw this when i worked with aig we were used to you know nice big cost you know, of living it, and- cost of living adjustments and performance awards so if you got an excellent review you got not only your three or four percent cost of living adjustment you got an extra three to five percent right as soon as 08 and 09 happened and again i worked for aig aig was one of the hardest hit companies in the country you know through the great recession sure. But if we had an excellent performance, we might get one to 2% increase. Two years, nobody got any increases, oh, no yeah. matter what your performance was, because yeah. they were hit so hard up front that they couldn't afford to raise our wages. It was like, you know, basically our wages were technically going down, even if we went up or one or 2% because of inflation. Yeah. And I think well, you're going to see that again. Well, here's the deal. I think, I think, I think a lot of people don't understand, um, nominal versus real yes here's the deal folks a lot of you have gotten a five percent rent or um, wage increase but i'm here to give you some bad news you're going backwards if inflation is six percent in rent food gas clothes whatever you're buying and you got five percent and inflation is six you're losing people don't get it anna right people are going to go backwards and i believe inflation gets worse from here I believe we are in that wage super cycle, which we haven't seen since the 70s. Wages went up 86% in the 70s. They haven't done that any other decade. I've done the research. Um, We're in it again. 
it, it, it's it's yeah. it, you're going to see more union strike. You're going to see more people show up for a job and leave after the first shift. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are in these, you can quit and get a, people are quitting now in record numbers before they line a job up. In my adult lifetime, that never happened in mass. Yes. They can now because there's jobs everywhere. There's 10 million, 11 million openings and seven. Uh, it's craziness. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that's really interesting, I was just reading about, and again, this is on the supply side, but it was something eye-opening to me is that there are more people choosing not to be in the workforce right now than there have been before. Yeah, and crazy. so we've got a lot of a lot less people available and willing to work for those wages. So even though the jobs are there, so since there's less people willing to work, those people that are are demanding higher wages and they're going to get them. So the question is, how does this impact? Let's say rates go up. Yep. We have we quit getting our deposits from the IRS in our checking account that many of us don't need, but we're getting anyway, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. And your your wages are going up. Um, and you know, companies now are having to pay more for your wages. So what do they have to do? They have to keep raising their prices to get people to buy their products to cover the higher wages. So even if you think that interest rates start cooling demand a little bit, we've now got this supply side issue where higher wages means higher prices for everything else. So I think inflation is going to be here a while. Um, the question is, how, how, how do we as real estate investors um, mitigate the risk of everything costing more and how do we benefit from inflation? And so those, you know, the, the two key things for me is I want to continue to buy assets like rental real estate in areas with high demand and low supply, that is like pertinent. Number one, mm -hmm. you know, metric, high demand, low supply in that market. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanna lock in my interest rate as long as I possibly can. And for me as a commercial investor, it's harder to do that than it is for you in a residential because exactly. my loans generally rate adjust every five years. So yep. I'm trying to relock for as long as I can at fairly low rates, move some of them to some 30 year, debt because now there are you know lenders that are willing to do that on the commercial side mm -hmm. um but keep buying assets that are going to keep going up in value with inflation mm -hmm. that are going to put more money in your pocket extra income and lock in those rates as long as you can and then no matter what happens and how long it lasts you're fairly protected and you'll do fairly well yeah it's 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 so wonderful to have i have a non-qm lender right velocity mortgage he's my expert on fridays he was able to get me 30 year money on an office building cash out refund I was awesome. like, "Woo!" I'll what take were the it. rates? Out of curiosity, uh, so I bought down a point. So it was uh, I paid four point nine per four point nine nine for a cash out refi on an office yeah. building, thirty year fixed. Most yeah. people look at that going, "What are you nuts?" I'm like, "Dude, it's an office building and it's cash out. Do you think I, you know, I'll take four nine nine? It's fine." Yes, yes. Like we said two years ago, four nine nine was yeah. amazing. Five point two was amazing when I locked that in on a property. <laughs> Yeah, and then they helped me do a purchase at 399. So um, yeah, Velocity Mortgage has helped me out a couple of times. So yeah, I think rate hikes are coming. I think the first one's half a point. Uh, I do think there's an upper bound, but uh, I think the Fed's put themselves in a corner. And it's, I again, the last thing I'll say is I think they're, the business cycle is going to, we do have a recession coming. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. So Anna, how can people find you? Great. You can follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram at on uh, REI Mom Kelly. <laughs> Forgot my name for a second. Yeah, it's like, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> my website is reimom.com and you can find me here every Wednesday having fun with you. Absolutely, Anna. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.